I'm just trying to relax. I'm just trying to relax. I want to make some nice relaxing uh, videos about watches, about Seiko tunas, and blah blah blah. But honestly, there's just too much crisis management going on in this house. Uh, let me tell you something. Last night, it was around bedtime for my daughters. It was getting close to bedtime. My wife was making them lunch, and I was doing the dishes. And she opens up the refrigerator to unearth a bunch of ingredients for lunch. And at the very back of the refrigerator, she pulls out this Pyrex bowl. And she says, Jeff, I need you to look at this. And so I turn around from doing the dishes, and I look at this Pyrex bowl. And uh, it, it's got vinegar in it, or water, I don't know all the way to the top and submerged inside this uh, this liquid is a very uh, ugly looking piece of fleshy mass it looks like it's part jellyfish it looks like it's an infected tonsil it has little frog legs dangling from it and it's growing a white beard of mold I guess and uh, it's unbelievably ugly. And, and my wife says, I think it's been in the refrigerator for six months. Is this like some high protein thingamajig you made and you forgot about it? And I said, no, I didn't make anything like that. Wait a minute, I said. Didn't you, during Thanksgiving, pull out the gizzards and the kidneys and the liver from uh, some bird or something and put it in a pirate? And my wife said, no, I never do that. Don't start making stuff up. I never do that. So I call my girls in. Hey girls, what is this thing? Are you doing like a school project, tide pool life, phylum, molluscum? Is this a mollusk? Is this a mollusk that you forgot about? And my girls don't. We don't know anything about it. So my girls don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. My wife doesn't know anything about it. No one's taking responsibility for this six month old fleshy bacteria disease type thing that's in a Pyrex dish. And that's what's wrong with America, the abnegation of individual responsibility. And I'm thinking, we have something in our refrigerator that's like streptococcus disease that terrorists could be making in their laboratory as they get ready to unleash biochemical warfare on my country. And you know, at any moment, Homeland Security could be at my house. I could have Child Protective Services removing children from this pestilence. And I realize as the dad, as the parent, as the adult, I need to take charge. So I, uh, I say to everyone, all right, everyone, get back. I'm going to take care of this. And I, put, I don't have a hazmat suit. I wish I had had one. But I did have some rubber gloves underneath the uh, kitchen sink. I put some rubber gloves on and I grabbed this jellyfish-like thing. I don't know what it is. I have, I, my wife doesn't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I grab it and I transfer it into the, uh, the kitchen sink. And as I'm holding it, I don't know if I just have a paranoid imagination. I can feel muscular contractions. I don't like this. I put it in the sink, I get a wooden salad spoon, and I stuff it down the garbage disposal. I turn the disposal on, and I'm, I feel like I'm fighting with this thing. Boom, 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 boom. And uh, I turn off the garbage disposal. I go, all right, everybody, crisis solved. My girls are going, pee you. What's that smell? I didn't notice it as I was fighting the mollusk, the jellyfish because I was so overcome with adrenaline, but there was a terrible smell in our kitchen. It smelled like dead mice that you find in the basement mixed with rancid vinegar. So I get some lemon scented Clorox, I spray it in the sink, and my girls are still complaining. Julia says, Dad, we have to move. We can't live here anymore. It's, it's over. And I say to her, uh, no, we're stuck here. Did you know California real estate law says you have to disclose any kind of pestilence, any kind of infestation? We're, we're here. There's nothing you can do about it. And she's moaning and crying about this. And I realize as her father, this is a teachable moment. And I say to her, Julia, in life, everything that's sweet turns sour. You just have to be able to deal with it. I'll give you an example, Julia. One of my buddies, he bought a brand new Lexus. On the third day of ownership, his best friend threw up in the front seat. 
Now my friend, he hired professionals to clean out the Lexus, but he said it was never the same again. Our house will never be the same again. Everybody in life will experience uh, someone throws up in the Lexus moment. When you get older, you'll be dating some guy, you might be in love with your boyfriend, one day he's going to have really bad breath. And you know, you're never going to see him the same again. And, and so you have to be able to deal with this. So um, I hope you feel better now. We had this nice, this was an opportunity for us to have a talk. And uh, my daughter says to me, Dad, that is the lamest thing I've ever heard. No one has thoughts like that but you. You're depressing. You're morbid. All right? And I was, I was so deflated. I was like, oh my gosh, we had this opportunity for a teachable moment, a meaningful connection. And uh, my daughter said, we're, we're going to bed, man. We don't need to hear this stuff about Lexus and people throwing up in Lexus and boyfriends with bad breath. Lame, dude. Yeah, they call me dude, so I'm in trouble. But uh, I say to them, well, at least the uh, crisis has been managed, right? And they're like, yeah, whatever. So, uh, you know, go to bed, wake up the next morning and make coffee. And, I, and my daughter, Julia, her favorite fruit is strawberries, so I'm prepared to wash the strawberries. And I look in the sink, and guess what's there? The creature. It's unscathed. The garbage disposal did nothing to it. And now, I'm, I'm scared of it. Now it's got eyes. Now it's Predator from that movie. And I'm talking to it. I'm going, you're a squatter. You're in my house illegally. I'm getting rid of you, dude. And my daughters hear me talking in the kitchen. They're in the living room. They're on their iPads. And, and they go into the kitchen. Dad? Who are you talking to? And I point to the sink. The creature's back. We need to bury it in the backyard. And Julia says, no, no, we're not, don't do that. Take it into the bathroom and flush it down the toilet. And Natalie's like, no, 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 no. Give it to the neighbor's dog. The neighbor's dog will eat anything. And we're arguing about how we're going to kill the creature. And all the while, this is my paranoid imagination, the creature's listening to us. And it looks kind of sad. Looks kind of glum. I kind of feel sorry for it. I mean, we're talking in front of it how we're going to execute it. And I'm, I don't know why, but I thought of Gollum from uh, Lord of the Rings. And I said, and before I lost my nerve, I just said, girls, let's go bury it in the backyard. Get a shovel. I get a bunch of paper towel. I wrap it around the creature. We go into the backyard. Beautiful morning in Los Angeles. In like, it's the end of January. The sun is out. The birds are chirping. No wonder everyone wants to live in Southern California. So I, uh, I say to the girls, all right, get Spotify on my smartphone. Let's play Barber's Adagio for Strings because there's something sacred about death and ritual and our need for closure. And so I, I dig about two feet into the soil right next to my mandarin uh, tree. I bury the creature, put the dirt back on it, and the girls uh, say, man, I hope... I hope that thing never comes back. And I said, oh, it's not going to come back, right? But you know, I don't know. I'm paranoid. What about tonight? Can you imagine? I'm in bed, and on my windowsill, the little creature's there cackling at me like a demon. I, you know what? If that happens, I'm selling my house. I don't care if I have to take a loss for it. I'll sell this bad boy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, I am out.